realize that in physical life. Because if you ever had to deal with a hard-headed child, I ain't talking about no part-time hard here. I'm talking about full-time, all the time hard here. If, if you've ever had to deal with a show enough hard here child, you know what I'm saying? That was not a happy time. Every hmm. time you turn around, it caused grief in your life. Y'all, if, if you had to deal with them, uh, not all the time, but sometimes, them times, you saw them, you almost hate to see them come. <laughs> Cause you know it's gonna be a hard day right here. Cause of that hard headed child. Ain't nothing pretty about no hard headed child. Yeah. That's the reason, even, even when as beautiful as my baby, man, that's a beautiful child right there. Great day tomorrow. <laughs> Who does a beautiful thing? But as beautiful as she is, when she was coming up, that little stuff, the folk like said, oh, she's so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ain't nothing cute about this obeying daddy. You follow what I'm saying? And that little stuff that kids like to do, like spitting at you and slapping you. Mm -hmm. And that little stuff that you really like, oh, boo boo, oh, boo boo, oh, boo boo, nothing. <laughs> you better teach boo boo that this is not acceptable behavior. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? But she's so cute. They ain't cute. They got nothing to do with it. There's nothing cute about being disobedient. The Bible says a disobedient child won't live his days out. Right, so if I want to continue to see her pretty face, I got to put something on her backside. Right, Y'all follow what I'm saying? Ain't nothing cute about disobedience. But we, that's, this, this is what we formulate in our kids' minds early on. Yeah. Don't, don't hit them yet. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It's so cute. There's nothing cute about being disobedient. Because that psyche grows up in them. Amen. And they'll start to think that they can get away with certain things. Because they keep. Y'all got that? We laugh at some stuff. We ought to be crying about it. And then we cry about stuff that we ought to be laughing about. Some of the stuff that we take seriously, we ought not take seriously. We ought to be able to laugh it off and say, God bless you. We'd be sitting over in the corner so we're, What's wrong with you? They, they, they said something. Well, they said something. <laughs> you couldn't laugh that off. <laughs> we cry about stuff we ought to be laughing about. Yeah. Then we laugh about stuff we ought to be crying about. Yeah. There's something wrong with us. Yeah. And unless we get our priorities straight, we'll never be completed what God wants us to be. Yeah. The lesson is yours. Yeah. Are you here tonight and you realize that you have not been concerned with what God is concerned with? You can change that tonight. You repent of your sins. Repentance is having a change of heart. You change the way you think. You change the way you look at things so that you can make your will God's will. Right. Repent in your heart. Confess with your mouth. According to 1 John 1, 9, God will forgive. Amen. If you're here tonight and you haven't obeyed the gospel, you've got to do so by hearing the fact that Jesus died, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Yes. Believe that with all your heart. John 8, 24. Confess that fact with your mind. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3. And we'll take you back here and baptize you, Acts 2, 38. God will add you to the church, Acts 2, 47. And if you stay on the wheel, <laughs> if you stay on the wheel, he'll mold you and shape you into what he wants you to be. And you'll be blessed in the end when you hear him say, well done. Come on tonight as we together stand and that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm.